the only answer is Rodgers, right? Yeah. Whether you like him or not, he's polarizing. He makes news. The team is good around him. It has to be him. What's going on, everybody? Fairbeds Podcast is back with another NFL preview uh, edition. I'm your host, Bear Chris Felica. So you can join here by my co-host, Jeff Schwartz. And I know what everybody's excited about hearing. Again, the group chat is back. Sammy P and Will Hill uh, will join us next segment to kick around a bunch of awards and a bunch of different categories here uh, for the NFL season. But Jeff, I figured we'd start it out with some uh, some bigger picture type things. And uh, are there opportunities either yeah. with a week one line or a win total here? And I think uh, the newsiest of newsiest things that is going on right now is a uh, with the reigning NFC champion, San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is out now. He's not going to play again, uh, maybe even practice for a while in the preseason with the calf injury. And Brandon Ayu, we, we do not know if he's going to be a member of the 49ers. Yeah. Reportedly, he's got a couple of different, uh, the Niners, I should say, have a couple of different trades that have been approved. And uh, we'll see if uh, the 49ers are able to move him because I guess it comes down right now to will IU and a, and a team be able to work out a deal but how does that affect your view of the 49ers like is under 11 and a half now a must play are we taking the Jets plus five and a half week one like with some of these reports a great question bear um you know the IU situation is interesting on just a football level first before gambling level um you know I, I think teams I'm curious how teams view him around the NFL because you can make the case that the Niners offense, the way it's designed is so successful that we see guys have careers in San Francisco in this offense and all about it, all over the Shanahan offense, all over the NFL, just play better than do anywhere else, you know? And so I'm curious how teams view him, whether it's the Steelers or Patriots or Browns we're hearing and the contract that, they want to give Brandon Ayuk because part of that's that he wants a new deal, right? And the Niners might be telling him, hey, man, go test the market. We know what the market is. You go see for yourself. It's not what you think it is. Why don't you just stay here and we'll pay you and you can remain a Niner? So from a football perspective, I'm kind of curious about how teams view him. right? Now. Because with, with the Niners, he's never going to be a 100 reception guy. But is that what he is in Pittsburgh? Is that what he is in Cleveland? In New England, certainly uh, he can he can have that. But you know, in, in Pittsburgh, he's the second, right? He's number two to to uh, to Pickens. If the Niners move on from him, to me, the win total is unaffected. To me, um, the problem with the Niners is everyone else is hurt right now, right? Bear, before we started recording today, McCaffrey's out, Pearsall's out. Not great, right? So, like, that's still, still haven't signed Trent Williams, but you would think that'd get and, done. Yeah. And the offensive line is a concern outside of Trent Williams. The McCaffrey injury is interesting, Bear, because when he is not in that offense, Purdy's not the same guy. It's not the same offense. Like, he's the one running back in the NFL I feel very strongly really, really matters to winning and losing on a team. And so that, that concerns me more than does what the status of Brent Ayuk is. I hope they can get something done. Either he's staying or going. Um, but it's really interesting to see sort of where he goes. If he goes to Pittsburgh Bear, I'm on there under eight and a half. It's now seven and a half. I wouldn't touch that. Does that change the way you feel about Pittsburgh's win total? Um, no, it, it doesn't. It, it, I, will, I will say this about the, the 49ers. Where like, like I think the things that Ayuk does, you talk about him not being a number one, but I think him being in the deep threat – and him blocking so well, I think those are two things that are really crucial to that San Francisco offense. So I think that would be it would be noticeable. I think there, but uh, no, it, that wouldn't necessarily change how I view uh, the Steelers. I mean, this, we, we, the Steelers are going to success or lack of thereof will be dictated by if Russell Wilson is healthy uh, coming back from his calf injury, or if Justin Fields. Yeah. Uh, winds up winning winning the job or playing while Wilson is is injured can he make make a step to be a, a serviceable NFL starting quarterback we know the we know the schedule is is brutally difficult uh we, we know they won what 10 games last year and that was despite losing two of the worst teams in the league in Arizona and New England uh we we know that they won by a lot of turnover luck and not turning the ball over a bunch uh we know Mike Tomlin has never had a losing record as yeah. as a head coach so I like I think I, are you going there? 
it, it, it doesn't necessarily upgrade yeah. them at all. I, what I would say is, and I know you have been very bullish on there under eight and a half. Now that the under total under over under is seven and a half. Would you be looking at buying anything back to try and maybe middle that thing at eight? Middle eight? I don't know if I have the guts for that, Bear. I don't think. I mean, if, if you do, you take a half a half unit, right, essentially. And so put on that. I mean, I probably not uh, right now. Uh, Pittsburgh's fascinating outside the IU situation, right? Because Russell Wilson's had this injury he's been dealing with. Uh, they just put out an unofficial depth chart for the first preseason game. Russell Wilson is number one. Just letting you guys know about depth charts, okay? In the preseason, disregard them, all right? If you're able to follow beat reporters of your favorite team on social media, able to watch highlights, watch preseason games, look at where the players are playing in specific units. Are they first team, second team, third team? Are they the first special teams guy? Because that matters more, Bear, than where a quarterback is or any position is listed on an unofficial depth chart before the first preseason game. Like J.J. McCarthy, for example, of the Vikings. He's listed as a as second or third string in a, in a battle for. He's not second or third string bear. He's at worst second string. At best, he'll win the job. Like guys, so Russell Wilson's listed first. I have contended all along. They want him to start. Um, people that are inside the team that know the team want him to start, even though Fields has played decently well in training camp. Um, I still think it's Russell Wilson until I see otherwise in that in that position, unless he's hurt or um, they're not going to bench him. Like in my opinion, they're not going to bench him before he even gets a chance to play in a preseason game or a regular season game. So I think it's still Russell Wilson. Yeah, and, and another team with the quarterback issue right now are the Los Angeles Chargers. We talked about that last week as well, literally right before uh, Justin Herbert was diagnosed with the uh, plantar fascia injury. Uh, Easton Stick will be their guy until uh, he is back. Like th this is not a type of injury that is going to heal quickly and go away, right? Like, like like under under eight and a half seems like a pretty darn good bet still. I think so. I mean, look, it. We could go back to different years when quarterbacks entered a season with a lingering injury, right? Joe Burrow last year. Wasn't there a DAC season? Not not the ankle year. But wasn't there like a DAC calf thing one year? It, it's it's mm -hmm. these, these linger bear. It's a foot injury. He's out most of the preseason already with a brand new offense, brand new you know guys. He's throwing the ball to, working with some new offensive linemen in there. I think it's a problem in a tough division. Um, I would lean even more under now. I don't I don't know if he can play all year healthy and he was hurt last was it last year with the rib injury was last, last year, year? His, his like hand, his just hand, right? Finger? hand and rib or whatever it was in the chiefs game early in the season i don't like my quarterback being hurt in the preseason bear i don't like it it does it feels like a bad omen for the regular season yeah under seven and a half is an alt is an alt one total might be uh worth a look too and then uh the other team that shared the that shares so far with the chargers the rams uh a lot of offensive line injuries there my friend yeah, look, they, they reshuffled their offensive line to uh, be bigger inside, which I liked. Steve Avila went inside. They, they got Jonah Jackson. They brought in Dotson last season, like a big offensive line. But right now they're down Jackson, Jackson, the uh, the law firm on the left side of the offensive line, and Rob haven't seen their longtime right tackle bear uh, down right now with an ankle. Steve Avila, as I mentioned, new, new job at center this season. I like the Rams a lot this year, but their offensive line is super concerning. You know, they're not going to win a lot of games if they're that injured. We know that. We saw that two years ago. Um, and I am concerned that with a line like this, they just signed, I think, two more guys today. Like, it, it, it reeks of we're not starting the year healthy on that position. And with Matt Stafford at his age and what you want to do with that offense, you need him to – you need those guys to be healthy. So I am I am concerned about the Rams. Yeah, it, 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 again, that division necessarily isn't it, isn't the greatest, but yeah, the Ram, it's not a position of strength for the Rams, and, and with Stafford needing to keep him healthy and open a pulse for Williams, that, that is a big concern. We know our big concern is now alleviated. Because the concern is over. Gambling group chat is back. Sammy P and Will join Jeff and I. Well, you know football season is getting close. Sammy P and Will are back here for the Gambling Group Chat. It's great to see you two gentlemen once again. And Jeff and I have anxiously been awaiting your return. Uh, so football season's here. And, and I guess last year we, we had some great bets 
on Brock Purdy at great numbers. Sammy, you had a great bet on Tyree Kill to be MVP. So I think uh, the moral of the story, if it wasn't going to be Tyree Kill or if it wasn't going to be Christian McCaffrey last year, don't bet on anybody other than a quarterback. And, and I think the odds obviously dictate that with Patrick Mahomes, a big favorite. Uh, Josh Allen, second choice, eight to one. CJ Stroud, Joe Burrow coming back. Uh, it feels like everybody has a Jared Goff ticket. We know how that uh, usually ends. But uh, but Sammy, I'll start. I'll start with you. I, I know we. I say you can't bet a uh, someone other than a quarterback. But are you going to follow that advice? Are you going to stay stay with the quarterback this year in the market? Are you still maybe going to try and uh, dig deep for a little bit of value? I dug deep last year. And then I remember our editors at Fox said, hey, you should write this piece on Tyreek Hill. And I was like, oh, don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. And I wrote it. And three days later, he rolled his ankle and that was it. It was the kiss of death. So I I don't know. And now, of course, Tyreek Hill, 75 to 1, 80 to 1. I bet him at 125 to 1 last year. And it's basically a coaster in my office right now. I just, I don't understand this C.J. Stroud seven, eight to one. I like CJ Stroud. And I think, you know, I'm going to get into the Texans maybe in a little bit, how I feel about their team this year, but I, I cannot bet these guys at seven, eight to one. I just, I'm looking for bigger pops. You know, I I was looking at Justin Herbert, but now he's hurt. That's blown out to 22 to one. You know, Dak is always sort of a guy that puts up numbers. Um, the division's kind of weak after Philly and Dallas Dak at maybe 20 to one. Isn't he was the- third last year, wasn't he? He was at one point, he wasn't he favored last year? I think so. Week 10, week 11. The crazy thing about this market, and we talked about this all last year, is that you're going to have six different favorites over the course of the year. So my advice for anybody would be to take those guys at the top, just wait them out because they're probably at some point going to get a little bit higher. And you want to pop the guys in that 20 to 30 to one range. You mentioned Goff. Tua is 25 to one. And I'll tell you what, one of my buddies bet a thousand on Anthony Richardson at 30 to one. I don't, have any investment on that but that's a long way of me saying like it's basically find a good number and bet that and then you build off that yeah and i and i would just say like you mentioned golf golf was a hot name and i, I certainly understood golf 35 40 to 1 i wrote him up at i think 35 to 1 it's a lot different now at 20 to 1 and that's really the theme with the mvp where you know you look at 2018, 2019, Lamar, Mahomes, these guys won the award at 80 to 1, 75 to 1, first year starters. You look at the board, you just, the books have gotten sharper and how they price this stuff. Unfortunately, the party's kind of over where uh, we know what it's going to be. We know it's going to be a quarterback. We know it's going to be a quarterback of a top two seed, too. I think you go back like 15 years. Of course, Peterson won it in, what was it, 2012 as a running back. But other than that, the only non one or two seed uh, was Peyton Manning in 2008. His team was like 12 and 4, but they didn't win the division. So you got to win the division. You got to be a two seed. I look, should we go back to the well with Brock Purdy at 16 to one? That's a team. They're always good for 12, 13 wins. I know you have to worry about the Super Bowl hangover. Uh, I know, you know, the Ayuk trade is now in the mix, but he's going to put up stats. He, he's going to, you know, limit interceptions. He's got a million weapons around him. He's probably going to win 12 games. He's probably going to be lower at 16 to one. Now he's probably going to be lower that, than that uh, at some point, you know, late in the season when they're, whatever, 10 and four, 11 and three, whatever it is. And he's got gaudy numbers again. Same sort of thinking as last year. Now we were, we had 22 to one last year and we went into Christmas. I think he was minus 300 or whatever the money line was on the 49ers versus the Ravens at Christmas night. And I know he's probably still out there throwing interceptions, throwing to guys in the wrong uniform. But uh, I think of all of the numbers, that's probably still the, my favorite one, at least. So, Will, I'll go, I'll kind of raise your point here. Um, it's been since 2014 that a a quarterback that's not the one seed of the conference has won the MVP. It's very simple. Who is winning the conference or who is the one seed in a conference? That's who you bet on. Patrick Mahomes. Like I, I don't know why it's so difficult. I know we want to find plus 2,000, plus 1,600, but Purdy's an option, but they have no wide receivers right now. Like today, the news, like three guys are, un- are and injured. And McCaffrey just got hurt, too. hurt his calf. Yeah. McCaffrey hurt, Pearsall hurt, IU seemingly traded any second now. Um, so the Niners aren't going to be quite the same team. Their left tackle right now, not not there. The rest of the offensive line, not very good. Bunch of injuries on the offensive line. I'm not quite sure it's the 49ers. You know, if you like the Lions to be the one seed in the NFC, golf is certainly playable. Uh, you know, in the AFC, I, as a Chiefs fan, I worry about a team like the Bengals. Like Joe Burrow, they find a way. To beat the Chiefs all the time. Now they play week two this year. It's a little different than playing the end of the season. 
But to me, it's like it's Patrick Mahomes, it's Burrow. If you think that Jordan Love and the Packers are the one seed, throw the money on them. But betting the someone to, you know, Anthony Richardson to finish 10 and 7, he's not winning the MVP. You know, you know what I heard there, Will? I, I, I heard someone I heard someone say with all these 49ers injuries and everybody hurt. I heard New York Jets last undefeated team. That, that that's what I heard. <laughs> I think I think that sounds pretty good. And, and you and I, I, I don't need any fuel to the fire. I am already uh, on an island here, same as last year. We just run it back from last year, but it's different than last year, which I, I know we sound like, uh, you know, those people that that always. Well, no, this year it's going to be different. Well, this year I think it is going to be different. They really fortified the offensive line. Uh, and if you heard me on the other shows, man, I, I've been pounding the table for this team. Uh, I thought they had a really good offseason. They addressed the offensive line every single way. Free agency, draft, uh, trades. And look, they don't have a quarterback on, on their team last year, a team that won seven games that's even going to be a backup this year. It's all third stringers. It's probably guys that are never going to ever throw another pass in the NFL when you look at Trevor Simeon, Zach Wilson, and, uh, and Tim Boyle. Now, I don't. I mean, what, what's the over-under for passes thrown for those guys the rest of their career? Maybe Zach Wilson gets in a game somewhere and throws one, uh, but he's the, probably the third string for the Broncos. The team still won seven games, and now you're, you're even your backup quarterback situation is different with Tyrod Taylor. Uh, and, and you look at the competition in the division too if you know because i think the division is uh is certainly winnable and certainly playable and that's the way to go buffalo has a brutal schedule they play all four teams that were in the conference title games last year so that's ravens chiefs that's lions 49ers then two versus the jets two versus the dolphins and they play at the texans uh their other competitor is miami miami we know struggles in cold weather look at them late in the season at green bay at cleveland and at the jets all like late november or on so how is that going to go for them Jets, uh, Jets are like two to one to win the division. Like you said, fifteen to one last undefeated. Because if you can get by the San Francisco game, it's a big if. But after that, it's a lot of Patriots and Steelers and Broncos and you know Titans. Uh, there is a path, Bear. There is a path. I know. Uh, I know hope can be a, a dangerous thing, but there is reason to have hope here for the Jets. I've got I, I favored fifteen times, guys. I got the Jets favored fifteen times this year, and I guess. Should we have that conversation, Bear? Are we are 16 we to one, sixteen to one? Aaron Rodgers MVP. Well, twenty five to one at Fanduel. I mean, like and that's that's oh. an important conversation. We can all talk about who we like to win the MVP, and we're probably all going to be wrong. But I think you have to consider this is why you have multiple outs, right? DraftKings has sixteen to one. Some books have twenty five to one. There's a twenty to one. There's a eighteen to one. So no matter who you bet. You have to get the best number because you make a hundred dollar bet on Aaron Rodgers. He wins the MVP. We're talking a nine hundred dollar difference if you bet sixteen or twenty five to one. So just get the right number in whatever you do in terms of these futures. Yeah, I I think that's a great point. I've seen uh, Josh Allen anywhere plus eight hundred plus, and I think he was plus nine hundred somewhere else. I I actually did play Aaron Rodgers uh, MVP, and I actually did play Josh Allen uh, MVP as well because I think there's this narrative out there about the Bills being down and, and will you hit on their schedule. Uh, I think that roster turnover could be a good thing. They, they might be better off without gigs. And obviously, if they go on and have a great year this year, I think I think last year, so many people, like it seemed like every week, like people were like begging Josh Allen to be the favorite, to ultimately be the MVP. And like he was always around in the race. And every week it was maybe now is the buy point on Josh Allen. I, I think I think there's a, a bit of a narrative play there too, uh, with Josh Allen on around nine to one to win uh MVP of, of the league. So if we look at obviously the receivers here, um, were the big I shouldn't say just the, just receivers, but quarterbacks, wide receivers. Uh, it was an unbelievable rookie class with the with the quarterbacks that went in the first round, the wide receivers that went uh, really high. Uh, number one pick, Caleb Williams, obviously the uh, the offensive rookie of the year, preseason favorite at uh, at plus one thirty five. And you got Jay Daniels in there and Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, right, right after that. Uh, Sammy, what 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 are the early returns for the very 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 early returns uh, from Bears camp about their uh, their quarterback of the present and future? Sounds good. You know, it's one thing to to beat your teammates in training camp; it's another thing to do it in the NFL. And you know, we've actually seen some sharp money here in Vegas on the Tennessee Titans Week One. Um, I saw this stat: uh, a first year quarterback. Uh, number one overall pick is 0-15 in his first 15 starts or something like that. So, like, the last 15 number one picks have lost that first game. But Mm. this is a separate situation, Bear, because we never see a quarterback this good 
go to a team that won seven games. It, it, it doesn't happen. Usually a guy like Caleb Williams goes to a team that was two and 15 or three and 14. The bears went seven and 10 last year, but because of the trade with Carolina, they get Carolina's pick and take Caleb. I don't know that I want to bet them at plus a quarter or plus one thirty five. Um, but you know, the, the interesting Chicago conversation to me is, is the win total against the playoff market. Uh, DraftKings, I believe is dealing eight and a half on the win total over minus minus one sixty now, but they're even money to make the playoffs. It, it's basically the same bet. They win nine games, they're going to the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, in the NFC, you could go nine and eight and make the playoffs. But I think all the Chicago stuff is fascinating because their defense got better last year with the addition of Montez Sweat. But the quarterback is going to make their defense better and their special teams better because their field position is going to be better because they're actually going to be able to throw a forward pass. I mean, you went from Mitch Trubisky, Nick Foles, and Justin Fields to – one of the best quarterback prospects we've ever seen. I mean, this kid was higher rated than Patrick Mahomes and higher rated than CJ Stroud, you know, coming into the league. So I think the hype is is well deserved, but he's also, guys, he's gonna have some moments where he's gonna throw really dumb passes or he's gonna be running with the football like out with his hand and it's gonna get stripped. He's gonna lose them a couple of games. But the hope in Chicago is that he can win them more games than he loses them. And what I mean by that is, you know, make these crucial decisions in the fourth quarter and not throw a crucial interception for a touchdown. So I think I think he's gonna be the rookie of the year. But in terms of the price, you know, I don't I don't think that Bo Nix at 18 to 1 is a bad is a bad pop at all. You know, system guy, Peyton usually gets the most out of his quarterbacks, quick throws, they've got talent, pretty good line. I think 16 and 1, 18 and 1 on Bo Nix is is a decent poke. Yeah, I uh, and it's funny about Caleb Williams because if you're optimistic about the Bears, you say, hey, he's not the only rookie. And they've really just, I mean, think about the draft you have, not only to win seven games, but you get Caleb Williams, then you get a Dunze with uh, what was it, the ninth pick. And if you like the Bears, get them now and you, you may be a little late to the party, but better late than never because there's going to be another bump. Because by the time people listen to this, the hard knocks will debut. And we always know how those hard knocks teams, you know, the audience falls in love, the betting public falls in love. They see, uh, you know, a different side of these teams, they see the optimistic view of it, and then you get a little bump. So I wouldn't be surprised. I think we've already seen some nines pop up. I wouldn't be surprised if if nine is sort of the uh, the painted number by the time the season kicks off. I don't think we'll quite get to nine and a half, but I do think there is another bump coming for uh, for the Bears. I will say for rookie of the year, probably going to be a quarterback, but. If you want to take a shot at a number, I, I think we're all kind of forgetting how good Marvin Harrison Jr. is. He goes to a quarterback that look, he's well, you know, I don't, he's not a perfect player. Gets hurt too much, too little. You can say all those things. He's still he's still pretty good. He's still you know an adequate player, probably 10th, 12th best quarterback in the league. Uh, plays all his games in good weather. Arizona, you don't have to worry about weather, so that's good for passing stats. And their defense in Arizona is horrendous. So you're always going to be playing catch up, trying to uh, play keep up. He could put just eye popping numbers up in it, like five to one or so. I, I don't think Harrison Jr. is a bad bet. I really don't. Uh, Sammy, is there a chance Caleb Williams is? reined in a little bit because of what the defense and they hope the run game can do like is it possible that his numbers are not as good as Jaden Daniels just because they don't ask him to do as much as Daniels would have to do in Washington like that's my concern about about Williams is like they just say look man our defense is good we, we have built our offensive lineup we want to run the football sort of keep it out of your control just as a rookie and that sort of brings his numbers down from what they they, they can be yeah, I think it's a fair question. You know, if the Bears were going to be three win bad, he probably gets better numbers, right? Because they're going to be trailing in games. But I mean, for a win total eight and a half, as Will said, probably going to close nine by the time we get to opening night. You know, they're probably going to run the ball more. But I think I there's two things working in favor of Williams. The best Bears quarterback of all time is Sid Luckman, right? <laughs> I mean, like, it, like that's the who people look up to in terms of like, the most talented Chicago quarterback. So it's been almost a century since that guy played. I don't actually know when he played. I wasn't around for it. Maybe uh, maybe Bear was when uh, Come on. Buckman was was pulling down the runs. But he's also, guys, He's. I think people are going to realize that he can make plays with his legs. Oh, yeah. We are gonna see him. We are going to see him bust 20 and 30-yard runs, maybe weekly. And some of those for touchdowns. So I think his ability to do everything on the football field, his ability to throw on the run, He's going to wow a lot of people, and I think that whole Bears quarterback notion that the Bears don't have good quarterbacks, I think that's all going to feed the beast. But it's funny, as as you guys were just talking, I was looking at Lad McConkey at 40-1. to 1. 
Like, it's funny. We could talk ourselves into anybody at the right number. <laughs> it's funny. I'm glad you mentioned Lad, and I'm glad, Will, you mentioned Harris, because I was going to say even previous segment, like, is it worth a flyer on maybe – Kyler Murray at 50 to 1 to an MVP. But, but I mean, early in the season, uh, you've got Buffalo, Detroit, San Francisco, Green Bay, like in their first six games. So they're, they're probably going to lose all of those, or maybe three of them. So, so I don't think record wise they're going to do it, but that could lead to, to Harrison. And someone who I did play for Offensive Rookie of the Year was another wide receiver. I played Brian Thomas, the other LSU wide receiver who's in Jacksonville now. I think he is a big play weapon, and I think uh, with with Jacksonville losing Zay Jones and losing Ridley, uh, he's going to be a massive part of that offense and will give uh, Trevor Lawrence a big, deep threat. And I think uh, his explosiveness, 40-1, to 1, to be a uh, offensive rookie of the year and 16 to one. I played him for, to, uh, for the next category we're going to talk about, which is uh, which of these rookies will lead uh, in, in receiving yards, Harrison jr. The favorite uh, neighbor's second choice, Ladd McConkey third choice. Like you said, uh, Sammy out there in San Diego. Now you just got to worry about that quarterback situation there with Herbert being injured. Don't you? Sure. I, I think another name too, to, to consider given you know, because we always talk about opportunity, right? It's about usage and opportunity. And Buffalo loses Diggs and Gabe Davis. Well, Gabe Davis was on a milk carton last year, so he wasn't the guy that they projected him to be. But you look at the usage for Keon Coleman that, that he could get this year, and that is a monster target, right? 6'4", 220. I think Coleman is, is as good as any of these guys in terms of like pure physical attributes, right? Big guy can go up and get it. One-handed grabs, you know, over the shoulder can make basically make any catch on the field. I think that's a guy though, considering what Buffalo lost and how Josh Allen is going to have to find rhythm with this kid early. I don't think that's the worst bet either. Keon Coleman, offensive rookie of the year, 30 to one. Um, You know, I, I always talk about betting these guys in the 20 to 30 range. We talked about it in MVP. I'll talk about it in this market. I'll talk about it in basically any market. Before the season, you want to pop the guys in that range. Because if you're right, they go down to 15 to 1, 10 to 1, and then you can bet somebody else. You could bet off the 20 to 30 to 1 ticket because it puts you in a good spot to then secure a profit. Yeah, uh, look, I... Whatever I'm going to say, I, you have to put the precursor. It's probably going to be Harrison, just because, like I said, he's such a right. bad defense, good weather, pretty good quarterback. It's probably going to be Harrison. Uh, and it's funny, I, uh, you know, I, I thought about this market without looking the odds, and I have to say, the market again is a little sharper than I was hoping because I had Keon Coleman in mind too, and I was thinking, hey, he's like the seventh or eighth receiver picked. He'll probably be seventh or eighth in odds, maybe get him twenty to one for most receiving yards for a rookie. He's six to one, and then I was like, you know, this the kid uh, Corley for the Jets from Western Kentucky, mid round pick. Nobody ever heard of him. Nobody ever heard of Western Kentucky. Maybe he's like 100, 150 to one. Well, he's 40 to one. So they're a little sharper here than I'd like. That being said, Harrison's probably the right pick. I, I can't argue if you like neighbors at five to one just because they have no other weapons. They're going to be feeding it nonstop. Now, the, the other side of that is, well, you could double them. That's their only weapon. You got Daniel Jones throwing them. You got bad weather. I understand that. But uh, it sounds like he's just going to be a monster player. Obviously, we all saw him in college. He's a tremendous talent. They don't have anyone else to throw to. So bang for your buck. And they're going to be behind a lot. Isn't, and they're going to be behind a lot. Uh, yeah. Again, a, a Dunze is not a bad number either. 14 to one polished receiver. Uh, there, there's a lot going for it. you. Can't double him because you got Keenan Allen, you got DJ Moore, but are they going to run the ball too much? I don't know. So it, it's probably Harrison, but I, I would say you bang for your buck. It's probably neighbors at 15 to one. And uh, just to go back quickly to offensive rookie of the year, we mentioned McCaffrey getting hurt. 250 to one on Cody Schrader. It's a bet that's obviously not going to win, but that could at least give you maybe a positive cash out if Schrader, who led the SEC in rushing, um, you're going to put him in Shanahan's system. We've seen crazier things happen in that Shanahan system with late round picks. That's at least one again, not going to win, but at 250 to one, you can at least maybe get a you know prop swap, a positive cash out, something like that. It's at least intriguing. Like fantasy league, deep sleeper, something like that, where that could at least be a fence. I'm glad you mentioned neighbors because look, we should always be enticed with training camp film from reporters, but all he's done is catch every single pass that Daniel Jones has thrown to him this entire training camp. And that, you know, they have joint practices with the lions right now. And he is torching that entire secondary. It's not the best secondary in the world, but all he's done entire camp is catch the ball. Every single time the ball's thrown him, they, they tracked 17 of 18 passes in team drills the last two days against the lions. He's caught. And, and to your point about look, Bad quarterback, I, I get it. Not a great quarterback, but behind in a lot of games, 
and just say, hey, man, go catch the football. Like, go go, go get up in the air and catch the ball. Neighbors to me for most receiving yards, I don't know if I like quite as much as I like his, like, offensive rookie of the year. Um, uh, I, I don't know if he'll get enough yards per se, but as far as, like, the ability to make – those explosive plays and make wow plays and get on the radar. He's in New York. We know those games are on national television far more than they should be. So <laughs> neighbors to me is sort of the, the sleeper here for me. And a lot of these awards, if, if what he can do in training camp so far is what he can do in the regular season. Jeff, what's the latest on uh, Xavier Leggett? Cause I had thought about him maybe as an option uh, here as well, because they're going to need him in the, for, to be the type of receiver that they drafted him to be. Uh, if Bryce Young is is going to make that step and they're going to surprise some people like that, they think, I, I know he left injured. Like, what's the yeah, he's been, he's, there? Have you heard anything? He's been a little beat up uh, this camp. I, I just know, I talked to someone there that they think um, that, uh, that Deontay Johnson will have 120 catches for them. So, um, like, they think he'll be that big of a part of the offense, which is not anything to do with this award. But if you look at his markets for, for catches or, or yards, they think he's going to be a big part of this offense. Deontay Johnson over catches. I like the uh, most catches in the season. Deontay, you probably get a could probably get a nice little number on that one. I, I don't know. I mean, look, obviously, I don't think he's going to catch 120 passes, but they feel you just said that you, you said, just said it. someone you just said in the it. building yeah, told you that they're going to catch 120 passes. If he okay. catches 119, we're coming for your ass. I get told be a lot of stuff. It doesn't mean it's always going to come true. I heard uh, Panther but, Super Bowl. Actually, that's what I heard. Uh, yeah, I most receptions in the league, 100 to one. There you go. There we go. Like that. There we go. Perfect. They, 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 we did so well last year with the 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 in, the in pod bets that, that they went really well. So I'm sure this will uh, end well, and we're all going to gang up on Jeff at the end of the year. All right, the one that we had so much fun with last year, comeback player of the year, Demar Hamlin, died on the field previous year. Everyone we all thought he would be the guy, and then lo and behold, by the end of the year, uh, we were holding Joe Flacco tickets at massive numbers, and uh, and and that got home. It created a rule change that. And frankly, you could include Geno Smith the previous year with kind of some skewed criteria as to being comeback player of the year. So now the rules are changed. It's going to really be focused more on some type of injury or uh, something along those lines. So right then and there, we talked about it with MVP. Does it really limit it to the quarterbacks? Comeback player of the year, does it kind of limit it to Burrow Rodgers and maybe Chris Rodgers? I think it's just Aaron Rodgers, guys, right? Like, Burrow's already won this award. He's going to win twice in in two in three years, basically. Right. It'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be twice in three years he wins this award. Um, the storyline is Rodgers, right? If you Will's high on the on on Rodgers and, and the Jets. Bear, you have made a passionate plea last podcast. The Jets are winning the Super Bowl, so yes. both of you guys are like to me. If if they're going to be that good, the only answer is Rodgers, right? Yeah. Whether you like him or not, he's polarizing. He makes news. The team is good around him. It has to be him. I don't think the Falcons are good enough for Cousins to get this award. Um, and, you know, they can't wait to play Michael Penix, obviously. They drafted him eighth overall. Not Richardson, probably not good enough to win the division in, in, in Indianapolis. It's just Rodgers. Because I don't think Burrow's going to win twice in three years. I still wouldn't rule Rodgers coming out last year. I think he could still happen. Washington against Christmas Eve. I mean, wh- wh- why can't it happen? Why can't he? Uh, a wild card he, game. He's absolutely back in, in, in the playoffs. Oh, uh, what a stupid playoff. subplot that was. My goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So ridiculous. What about did Trubisky? You, 200 to 1, Bear. <laughs> did, did he get hurt last year? It was just uh, not, not noticeable. Who f- cares? I don't know. Oops. Oh, Shouldn't say that word. Shouldn't say that word. My bad. Bleep that out. Uh, the one is uh, Deshaun Watson. I think we have to have this conversation, too. They're never going to vote for Deshaun no. Watson for any award. No. So I, I would be very careful with any Deshaun Watson bets, MVP, no. comeback player of the year. He could be he could be one of the greatest players in the league, and the voters just aren't gonna they're just not gonna vote for him. Yeah. I, I would agree. And I'm I'm I want to make one case for one non quarterback guy. Uh, I took 150 to one flyer on Antalano Hufanga from the 49ers just because we saw how their secondary in their past game really in past defense really struggled last yeah. year without him. He was a big reason why they were not the quality of the defense that they were uh, the previous year. New second, new, new coordinator back in the secondary. Uh, if they improve defensively, I think you could point some fingers to him being the reason why. Again, uh, 150 to one, you're not expecting to win that bet. But if he got, uh, if he makes some plays early on, and people are talking about the Niners like they probably should be, uh, why, why not? I thought you were going to say Nick Gates for a second. 
Nick Gates, if, if we're using 2024 criteria for 2022, Nick Gates absolutely should have been comeback player of the year. Chubb's at least another guy worth mentioning because yes. he's, uh, you know, he's a popular player. He had a very, I guess, public injury happened on Monday Night Football, happened you know, in gruesome yeah. fashion. He's a good player. I just, I don't know that he can, like, from a productive football standpoint, can he come back and rush for a thousand yards? I mean, that was a bad injury for a running back, you know, at his age. Can he come back and just hit the ground running? Uh, I think he's like eight, 10 to one. And he, he got steamed. He got bet a lot. I mean, the narrative is there. He's a, uh, he's in the public eye, the voter eye yeah. enough to, to fit that. I just, I don't know if you're going to get enough good football out of him to trump what the, one of the quarterbacks is because one of these quarterbacks is going to make the playoffs. And that's probably going to be the guy who takes it home. They've, they've kind of taken the fun out of this, this market too, where it was so random and people would, I thought it was interesting. People would complain, Oh, it's random. We don't know what it's going to be. Well, that created variance, and variance oh. created some some long shot tickets. Bears got a, a freaking boat named Joe Flacco right now, so you know we can't <laughs> complain about the variance. Yeah, I, what, 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 what did we get about? Well, one hundred and fifty to one, I think it was. I think I was late, and I'm, I think I got sixty to one, and I was pretty late, and I had to request it from some place. Remember, he wasn't on the field till December. Oh. I waited maybe a week or two. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to miss the boat completely. I got him. I think sixty to one and twelve to one, which look, it's not bad, but people, you know, one hundred and fifty, two hundred to one. There were some monster, monster tickets. I would like the logic and point still that he won this award. There was, there was, I, you, I come back from sitting on the couch is not a thing. That's not a thing that we, that has ever won. Wasn't with Gino award. the previous year either. Gino at least was like in the NFL for a couple of years. And, and maybe you feel bad that he got punched in the face, right? He got in a fight. He got benched. He got cut. Like he was still around. Going to on your couch to the NFL field is not like a comeback story. I think you take it too literally. I think it was always, I always looked at it this way. What's the best, it's the best story award. What's the best story? And Flacco coming out of nowhere to lead him to the playoffs. But it it always, Will, it had always been injury. It had always been Um, guys. Yeah, I mean, Gino wasn't really an injury, though, before that. Right. Gino started the process. Yeah, no, you're right. I don't don't remember the award. The guy died last year. That's part of it, too. We had a guy that died and came back into life. So I figured that was pretty, pretty big, solid. Good boy. Could people, and this is out there, but could he win it this year as sort of like a, if he's actually on the team, no. he plays normal snaps, and people sort of a makeup from last year? I think he's like 200 to 1. Could no. people say, all right, now you're, now you're actually a comeback? Because the case against him last year was he wasn't a comeback player because he never played. If he actually plays this year, could it be a little mea culpa? I'm just this, look, it's a, it's an idea segment. I'm, I'm throwing it's out ideas. Weird, it's such a weird award because he was maybe the worst comeback player of the year ever, like if he would have won it, right? Oh, yeah. I, he was he was on the field. He was the twelfth man on the field. The game that they lost, and then they did the fake punt thing. Like he actually cost them games. So it's, but but to be <laughs> fair, you know we always thought, and I think Jeff, you said it last year. It's the award which makes the best movie, and you would think the Hollywood scriptwriters would take the Hamlin story. That's that's literally made for a movie. But then Flacco gets off the couch, shakes off the Pringles, and comes out of nowhere. So it was. It was a wild, wild market. Well, I, I think the 2024-25 story will be uh, Bear and Aaron Rodgers return to Egypt uh, to talk about his 2024 uh, comeback player of the year win and his Super Bowl win uh, w- with the Jets. So, Can you imagine okay. how unbearable Bear would, would be even more than he already is now the Jets win the Super Bowl? No, I, I, I would not be unbearable. Yeah, I don't think you would. I don't think you Trust would. me, I would not be unbearable. What would be worse? For the for the for us, me, Oregon win the championship this year, or the Any Jets discussion you win the championship. You, you yeah, by Jay, far, you're Not minus two thirty in that, and that's probably you like. Know, you know, oh, I'll, I can't. I'll, I have made it very that. clear. I will be un. I, I it it's going to be bad. There's some fans that are going to get it. It's it's going to be if Oregon wins the championship, it's not going to be fun for a lot of fans. I give you a little O H I O. We're all, all every, every every man, woman, and child on the Bear Bets podcast uh, mid October going to be uh, wearing that <laughs> scarlet and gray against uh, against Jeff. Maybe Guys, we can get some Oregon gear if Jeff is uh, if we actually win the championship. Yeah, yeah, Maybe we've been he can hearing about it. that forever. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working. Sure, on we it. are. I'm just glad yeah. Bear can put his hand, his arm over his his head again now. I can't. I am so excited. I am so excited about being able to do that. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. Still a little little, little sore, still healing in the muscle, but uh, infinitely improved. So honestly, at this point, Bear, you could probably start for the White Sox. <laughs> that bullpen for that, I could I could probably throw about 25, 30 with my left hand out of the uh, out of the pen as a lefty specialist. But I want to give you. I know we're talking NFL right now, but massive props to you for your White Sox call or whatever they were, five to one or whatever it was early in the year for worst record in baseball. Give props to 
to Jeff for uh, the run line against the White Sox every night. Like, you guys were on it early, and uh, I might have a boat named Flacco named after me, but uh, you guys are going to have things named Crochet after you real soon. Well, look, I, I knew they were going to trade Cease. I, I would be lying, though, if I said I thought they would be 60 games under 500 the first week of August. Nobody <laughs> saw that coming. And I'll, I'll, I'll have a nice cash because I did bet them like 5-1 to one and then again at 3-1. to one. But I still think, like, if we do the math, I still don't think I'm going to make more money than Jeff, who just bets against them every day. Like, I, I'm going to do okay, but yeah. Jeff every day in the thread, oh, betting against the white side. It's, it's hit 21 times in a row. So I'm 59 and 36 um, against the run line, against them every night. And there are some nights when I do like the regular run line and I hit maybe a two and a half as well, a plus money. So um, he's laddering, he's laddering the run line there. <laughs> so yeah, but he's, uh, he's watching the White Sox though. So he's not really winning. Um, and then, and Crochet, by the way, has lost like the last four times he's pitched. They've lost, they've, they have, I get plus money on those games too, on the run line those nights. So it's been very profitable. It's, it's bankrolled. My entire futures market for both NFL and college football—it's fantastic. It, it, it's tremendous. I had, I had, look, I had the Marlins at twenty-five to one to have the worst record in baseball, and they're like forty-two and seventy-five, and they're not even going to sniff it. So, I'm happy you guys are winning. Hopefully, we just gave out some more award winners right there. Fired up that we're all back together again for this year. Uh, let's have another great year. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk again soon. Oh, Bear, so great to have those guys back. I'm so happy to see their faces. Uh, the, the the four of us, the four horsemen are back talking. Give, give us a couple of weeks, and we'll be happy to see their faces We anymore. We got like a, a plus 25,000 rookie of the year, Niners running back from Will. Just fantastic. So we're, we're right in the swing of things, Bear, right back where we left off. It is, and I almost threw out by a, a plus uh, two hundred and fifty to one uh, offensive rookie of the year too. My man Dylan Lowby, West Hampton Beach High School Hurricane alum, now with the uh, with, with the Raiders. Might have to might have to throw ten bucks on that or so just to oh, okay. keep it as a souvenir. But a uh, good kid from New Hampshire is a uh, supposedly having a good camp. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm rooting for the uh, for the high school fellow alum. I like it. All right, Bear. Time for best bets for the NFL. What do you have for me? Okay, I, I I think the best thing about hard knocks is when you can figure out that a team is going to be really really bad, and they the show is trying to spin it as they're going to be good, and there's optimism. Watching that Giants off season hard knocks, <laughs> it is apparent that this yeah. team has a lot of holes. I'm not sure they solved the offensive line problem. Uh, it is apparent how hamstrung they are by giving Daniel Jones the amount of money that they gave him. Uh, I don't think this is a good team at all. Uh, I took under five and a half as an yeah. alternate win total, a plus 152. Uh, their regular season win total is six and a half, but you can play that as well. And I also played them to be the last winless team at around 12 to one. Like If, like they, don't, if they don't beat Minnesota week one, and you're going to have uh, look, Minnesota is good. Their roster is good. I mean, yeah. quarterback situation is uncertain, but they got two good receivers. They got a good front seven, defensive coordinator who's going to bring it. Like good running game. Like if they if they don't beat the Vikings in a pick'em game at home, the ne the next games are at Washington, at Cleveland, Dallas, at yeah. Seattle versus Cincinnati versus uh, Philadelphia at Pittsburgh. Like if they don't beat the Vikings, that there, there's a potential yeah. here they don't win for a while. So uh, I, I think Giants worst record in the league, last team to win a game uh, under five and a half. I, I think all of those are very, very much in play. Well, we're hearing out at training camp, Malik Neighbors really good, which we just cover in the Yellow Group chat, good. and and that's about it, right? Like that's kind of it. The the problem with the Giants and why I I'm wholeheartedly in agreement with, with you here is. They don't have a lot of dudes. As of right now, just known quantities on their team that are good. Andrew Thomas, left tackle. Dexter Lawrence, D tackle. Brian Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau. Yep. They have some good play. Like, Ogarike is not a bad linebacker. They think Banks could be a good corner, but he's in the second season. Neighbors, high. I mean, there's some guys that can be elite players, Bear. Four. That's it. Four right now that we know 
are like like those players that you circle on the game plan. They're game wreckers. They don't have a lot of dudes, and they're in a tough division, right? We we think Philly and Dallas are going to be ten win teams. Washington should be feisty. So um, I'm with you on the Giants. I think I even took them under two and a half division wins already. Um, I'm I could probably pull that up and see if I if I if that's what I took. Um, because I just I'm with you. I, I'm I'm on their under. Um, I don't think that they're going to have a uh, a particularly good season. My best bet. You'll like to hear this, Bear, because it means the Jets are having a good season. Aaron Rodgers, comeback player of the year. I just don't see any other way this happens. Very rarely do quarterbacks get hurt, Bear, in back-to-back years to end their season, right? Like, there's Rodgers is going to stay healthy. Even if he plays 13 games, I don't know. Throw a number out there. The Jets are going to win, okay? I don't know if they're going to be over their win total, under. They're going to be They're going to be good with the Rodgers. Getting seven have. playoffs, he's going to win. Yes. And because you look at the other, the other you know, no more like off your couch stories, right? No more. I got benched. I'm back in like Geno Smith, right? Or Joe Flacco off the couch. It's got to be injured, right? They 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 change the criteria. It's not Kirk Cousins. I don't I don't buy that. I don't I don't think that in Atlanta they're going to win enough. And Joe Burrow won this award already to win it twice within your first like six seasons. Not great. I don't think he's going to win this award again. So give me Aaron Rodgers plus two hundred. And that was the thought like, with the coach of the year with Stefanski winning. Like they go, so many people thought D'Amico Ryan's was going to win that award. And then Stefanski won it for what, the second time in three years. I think, I think that what coach of the year ends up having doubles very often. You just, I don't know. I don't think you very, you see very often uh, come back. And I just thought Dak Prescott should have won that year anyways, but um, it, it, I don't think we've seen twice. I, I got to look it up to come back player of the year won by the same person more than once. No, I, I wouldn't think so either. But again, I, as I said at the, uh, the end of the gambling group chat. I, I think that this, the the story of the the off season next year is going to be the, uh, the the bear and Aaron Rodgers. They're doing a little bear bets podcast segment, returning to Egypt at the site where oh. where, where it all began and the, the the season and the the comeback player of the year and the Super Bowl season began. I, I think I think that's a it's a great I, setup. We get a lot of. Content. I have I have a repeat winner of the award. Can you can you can you give a guess, Bear? You're 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 good with this stuff. It's a it's an AFC East quarterback. Scott Mitchell, kind of known for having a, a less than stellar uh, arm strength. Chad Pennington. Chad Pennington. There you go. Double winner, Bear. So maybe I'm, I maybe I'm Chad, off here with the. With, I, I love I love Chad Pennington. I love, Chad Pennington was a just a great a, a great fit for the Jets, and he had a really good career. And unfortunately, uh, injuries caught up with him and uh, could not ultimately take the Jets to the promised land. But we have faith in Aaron Rodgers that he will this year. He'll win that comeback player. We'll get to the Super Bowl, and 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 the curse will be over. Speaking of over, I think that's about it for us. Uh, so fired up again. Yeah, Sammy and Bull back. Hopefully, yes. we uh, gave you some good info there. Appreciate everybody checking us out on the YouTube channel, uh, wherever you get your podcast, rating, reviewing, subscribing. Uh, we'll be back again next week uh, with, with some more of the same, kick around some different ideas and different thoughts. And until then, remember the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs> <laughs>